Hello, welcome one and all. This is Game and Chat Advance. It's the same old Game and Chat show, except this time around we're previewing upcoming titles and giving you an advanced peek at what to expect. Today I'm your host, Jack Longman of MyTendo64, and I am joined by my good old bro, my brother in arms, my gaming compatriot, Mike Scorpio. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, going, Mike. It's going great. So, Mike, since we're all gathered here today, what is the game or yeah what is the game we are talking about well the game is east 10 nordics um it's developed by nihon falcom and is published by nis america or nice america and it is a huge rpg game uh, featuring the main protagonist adol who is adventuring to where go on tell us where's he adventuring to i don't know he's lost he's got himself lost in a far off land surrounded by sea and the oh crap i've fucking forgotten it there's something um, oh fuck won't bugger shit in our sudden hole i'll stuck uh, you on the spot there because i forgot <laughs> uh, i'll golf i'll bring in golf fuck i know he's got bloody um Romans in it and bloody <laughs> Vikings, fucking Vikings, Vikings. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fucking Viking. <laughs> oh, all right then. Uh, um, shall we try again. This? Okay, right. so we'll try this again. I thought no, you no, had the thing up. You didn't have it's something golf. I know it. It's, I just it's, it's, oh, oh, it begins with no. I'd have the thing up, but it's not saying what it is. Son of. <laughs> All right, I'll try and avoid. Uh... I'll go to What's the wiki page. The yeah. Setting. Oh, Belia! A fucking Belia golf. Old oh, belly a goal. There we are. Right, let's 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 start go again. Okay. Okay. Counting you in in three, two, one. Hello, one and all. Well, uh, counting me in in three, two, one. Hello, one and all. This is Gaming Chat Advance. It's the same old Gaming Chat show, except in this one, we're talking about upcoming games and giving you an advanced look at what to expect. Today, I'm your host, Jack Longman of MyTendo64, and I am joined by my gaming bro, Mike Scorpio. Welcome to the show, hello, Mike. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Oh, sorry, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> we're starting again in three, two, oh, one. <laughs> Hello, one and all. Welcome to Gaming Chat Advance, the same old Gaming Chat show, except in this time around, we're giving you an up I've had it perfect every other fucking time. This is going to be the YouTube show. Jack's lost it. Jack is done. Jack is fucking fucked. This is the use bomb moment for me. <laughs> the fucker is at foot. We're going again in three, two. Hang on a minute. I need to compose myself. An extended one. Hello, one and all. Welcome to Game and Chat Advance, the same old Game and Chat show, except this time around, we're talking about upcoming titles and giving you an advanced peek at what to expect. I am your host, Jack Longman of Nintendo 64, and today I'm joined by my gaming bro, Mike Scorpio. Welcome to the show, Mike. Hey, bro. How's it going? It's going good, it's going great, and today we are talking all about the beautiful, the stunning, the gorgeous East 10 Nordics. As an action role-playing game, it sees the likes of a heroic swordsman adventurer, Adol Christian, returning to our screens. Except this time around, he's not the aged older hero that we knew from East 9's Monstrum Nox, but he's gone back in time. It's a rewind, he's 17 again. Did someone call for Zac Efron? <laughs> well played. <laughs> well played indeed. Published by NIS America and developed by Nihon Falcom, East X or East 10 is the latest installment of the East games and it's coming to the Nintendo Switch among other platforms. But let's be honest, 
It's looking good. It's looking beautiful on the Nintendo Switch. Having had some extensive time with it recently, I've enjoyed everything I've had to see of it. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing some more. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. And you had the privilege recently to play this game firsthand at a preview event. And so, yep. obviously, as part of our advanced look, you, you know, have to do a preview. Here we are. So what have been your initial thoughts of the game? Well, as, as you said, you know, with a preview, the East is, is, this game is so good. It didn't warrant just writing about it because mere typed words is not enough. It's got to be spoken about. I'm very passionate about this upcoming game. So what do I think of it? Well, so far, having extensively played a good about 18 hours of it, I'm still enthralled by the story. It might not be quite there to the standards of uh, Lacrimosa of Dana, which still holds the number one spot in my heart. But it's given off some serious Dana vibes. And it's one of Adol's best adventures yet. And I'm not just saying that because it's one of the most graphically improved looking games. And it's got one of the best performances. But with the whole revamped party system out the window and replaced by a duo system, combat has never looked so smooth. Yes, we have lost the ability to play with six different characters in, you know, by our teams of three, but by having it just literally paired up between Ado and newcomer to the series, Kaja, the pair get to embark on an adventurous quest that's going to take them here, there, and everywhere in the Orbelia Gulf, and with focus solely on these two as the main characters. There are more animations, more skills, everything's looking clean, and it's just a joy to be smashing foes to absolute bits it does look good and anybody who is watching this video on youtube you can you know see the gameplay for yourself it does look good it looks great and i do love the combat as well the combat um that they have the dual duo mechanic or the binder mechanic that they have yeah. where they fight in unison together that's yeah. a very very neat idea i do like how, how that looks yeah, yeah. So basically, it's like as, as game plays, you know, the, each character you can switch between them at any time. So they can attack separately with their own set of skills. But when you hold the ZR button when playing on the Nintendo Switch version, they will pair up, link in, and can deal more damage and perform a combination of varied skills, delivering damages of fire and ice in one hit. And what's more, when paired together, if an enemy is doing something that's defined as a strong attack and they glow with nice big red colour to give you an indication of what is happening, what's about to go down, as long as you are holding ZR and not attacking, you will just perform a perfect guard against it, sustaining no damage, which then actually boosts your own little counter on the corner. So when you do a retaliation attack, it's going to deal more damage and that battle is going to be over and done before you know it. And it's not just your typical, you know, adventuring around the world and stuff like that. To quote the Lonely Island song, you're on a boat. <laughs> yes, it is true. East X Nordics does pull a full-fledged Assassin's Creed 3? No, Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag. The steering, you know, taking control of your own vessel it is there. You do get to helm your very own ship and you get to sail the seas. You get to go finding little unique fishing spots to haul up some big ass tuna. You get to engage in mini warfare against ships, deep shooting damage. And when you've come across more larger vessels that have armor and can sustain more of a hit, once you've taken away their shield, it is time to full on ram them for a nice pace of a boardage hold their vessel, and then you've got to fight through the waves of enemies to successfully take that ship, take your treasure, and sink it to the deep briny sea below. So you can have a merry time on your maritime exploits. Gotcha. Indeed. And <laughs> as you said, you already quoted the good old Lonely Island. You can say as much as you want, I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. Take a good hard look at me because I'm standing on a boat. You know, the <laughs> the the seafaring part of the game it is a very big part of it. You know, you're not going to be limited to exploring one island. There are multiple islands to come across, different locations, different settings. 
we get to meet an entirely new race of people that live in the world of East, thanks to the introduction of the Normans, who are basically inspired by Vi Vikings. And during an interview with the current Nihon Falcon president, it was actually said that the inspiration for the Nordic inspiration of the game was due to the fact that he was watching Vikings on Netflix at the time. It was, and given the fact that, <laughs> given the fact that the East games are actually based on like an alternate version of Europe, you know, with the Roman Emperor being based on the Roman Emperor, they wanted to create a race of, you know, warriors or people, another kind of threat, basically, that come from further above. And who was present north of Europe? Vikings. The Vikings. And of course, then the Vikings uh, settled in, were given territory in Normandy, hence the rise of the Normans. Indeed, indeed. So, but yeah, like I was saying, the seafaring aspect is a huge part of the game. Not only can you sail from place to place, island to island, waging war as you go, or just uncovering secrets, but you get to upgrade the ship as you go. You know, you unlock the means of doing simple upgrades to, you know, add new arsenal, deal new damage, but you then get to improve handling you get to improve damage you get to improve life so you get to build the ship up the way you want to with your given resources and as of when you find new members of crew who will join you that improves the ship all the more so while she may be slow and sluggish in the very beginning it's not long before the sandras is up and running and is a full-fledged weapon of war well so Basically, it is essentially, you know, uh, kind of like Black Flag. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. It is Black Flag inspirations. But no, I mean, East in recent years, it really has been going strength from strength from E7 to E8, which, as I already said, is my personal favorite. Black Ramosa of Dana is well and truly up there. You know, this is a game that is following Sue and it is really closing the ranks i mean certain things happen story-wise i can't go too much into and uh basically adults given a certain period amount of time to live which obviously as someone that's played the game and knows full well he makes it well past the age of 17 years old um <laughs> it sort of takes away the threat that you because you know that he's He's clearly going to beat the bad guy boss. He's clearly going to save the day and do what's necessary because last time I checked, he don't die at 17. But, you know, it's still <laughs> a good motivation for him at that time. Just because we know it doesn't mean he knows it. But no, it, the combat, whether it's on the boat or specifically on land when it's him and Kaja against everyone, it's so smooth. It is the it is literally the best it has ever been for East. You know, improvements have been made. Nihon Falcom have really shown that they have been paying attention to what fans have been saying over recent years. And with every East release since, they've really upped their game. They've upped the ante and they've created something beautiful with Nordics. Let's put it that way. Well, that's good to hear then. That's good to hear. So final thoughts then. On the game. Final thoughts. I mean, I'm still playing through oh, it. I'm I'm taking yeah, my obviously. time with it because there is there's a lot to do. It's like um with challenge battles as well. So you know, it's like they're sort of like the unique monsters from Xenoblade Chronicles. You can find these big powerful monsters in the you know on the various islands, and if you're a slog to battle, but if you in proper old school gaming conventions, you learn the moves of the boss. You'll know when to attack, when to, you know, when to counter, when to shield, and you'll be doing some serious damage. But from customization to the graphics to performance to combat improvements, this is quite literally and possibly East at its finest. You know, we've seen teasers of it before of how good it can be how great it can be and Nihon Falcom have really made sure that this time around they hit that magic number but why settle for just my thoughts alone when we do have an upcoming special episode of Game and Chat SP where Mike himself tackles Yeast X Nordics and gives his thoughts on the first hour or so of the game but if you want more to read through 
we've got you covered because we'll also be posting our complete review of East X Nordics on the website very soon. It's well worth the read. Don't miss it. Until next time, you've been great. We've been us. Keep on gaming.